Hello everyone, Tommy J here, and today I'm here to talk to you about follower mission chance in World of Warcraft Garrisons. So what I'll be doing in this video is explaining how the chances are actually calculated, um, going into detail about pretty much everything that has an effect on the chance to succeed. So before we start, there will be some annotations on your screen right now if you're interested in any particular part of how the chances work, and there's also a link to the summary at the end, because this explanation is a bit on the long side. Anyway, let's begin. So firstly, how does this all work? Well, there's this one base number that's used in calculating pretty much everything, and it's actually the base chance a follower will have in a mission if it's the appropriate level and doesn't counter any abilities or have any useful traits. This value changes based on 1, how many abilities a particular mission has, 2, how many followers can be sent on the mission, and 3, whether or not a mission has a chance for success before you actually put a follower in. While the third only applies to missions below level 100, it's still good to know. So, to calculate the base chance for a level 100 mission, all you need to do is apply this equation. The base chance is equal to 100 divided by the total number of followers plus 3 times the total number of abilities. So, if a mission has 2 followers and 2 abilities, the base chance is 12.5%. If there are 3 followers and 2 abilities, the base is 11.11%. If there are 3 followers and 3 abilities, the base is 8.33%, and this continues all the way up to 3 followers and 6 abilities, where there will be a base chance of 4.76%. If, for example, we take this mission right here, Shafted Miners, where there are 4 abilities and 3 follower slots, and then we put a follower in who doesn't actually counter it, so right here, you'll notice there's a 6% base chance. If I put in a second, it goes up to 13, and a third will go up to 20. So, this means that overall, each follower has a base chance of 6.66%, or exactly what was calculated using that equation you saw earlier. At this stage, you may be wondering why when there's only one follower in here, it shows as a 6% chance, and not a 6.66 or even 7% chance, and that's because Blizzard uses what's called a floor function. Pretty much, numbers are always rounded down, so that 6.66 actually shows as 6. Anyway, on to ability countering. So, as I said earlier, every part uses that base chance to calculate how much they affect the overall chance, and the number of abilities counted is no different. So, each ability that you counter gives you 3 times the base as an overall chance. For example, if we stay on the Shafted Miners mission, where the base chance is 6.66%, by countering an ability, we'll get that base chance of the follower, plus the actual chance you get from countering. So, that initial 6 and 2 thirds, plus 3 times 6 and 2 thirds, which will overall give us 26.66%, which is just displayed as 26% because of that floor functioning I mentioned earlier. Anyway, the next thing to do is look at traits and how they affect the chance. So, once again, traits use that initial base chance to calculate how much they're worth. Most of them are actually the same. To show you this, we're going to use this mission, Claws, Pincers, and Tusks. Just to remind you, when there are 3 followers and 5 abilities to counter, the base chance will be 5.55, or 5 and 5 ninths to be exact. So take for example, Goldmane the Skinner. If I were to put him in, it would give 11%, and this is because the trait he has, High Stamina, actually gives a chance equal to the base, so 5.55 times 2. If we go to this mission, the Basilisk Stare, where the base chance is equal to 12.5% because it has both 2 abilities and 2 follower slots, and then I put in Crowman, you'll notice that it actually goes to 3 times the base. This is because Burst of Power and Countering the Mission Type both give a chance equal to the base as well. So, the traits that give the same chance as the base are Countering the Environment or Enemy Type, just up here, having Burst of Power or High Stamina, as well as Bluke, the follower's specific trait combat experience, which will give him that bonus no matter what the mission. But, that's not all. If I were to put in the follower Karg Blood Fury just down here, you'll notice that he has a 12.5% chance, but then if I put him in with Crowman, it goes a little bit higher. Karg had a 12.5, and Crowman, as you saw earlier, had a 37.5. The only thing that's changed is that there's this other trait, Child of Draenor, that's come into play. 
So, any trait that increases chance when on a mission with a particular race of friendlies will actually give 1.5 times the base, or in this case, 18.75%, which after rounding gives us 68% overall instead of that 50 that it would have been otherwise. Also, there's one other thing, and that's the trait Dancer. For those of you who don't know, Dancer is given to you by a mission, and it gives a follower a trait that actually counters Danger Zone. So, as you can see, my Benjamin Gibb right here, counters Danger Zone through Dancer. However, if I put a follower who counters Danger Zone through an ability, such as Arm in, he will get 50%, and this is because it's 12.5 plus 12.5 times 3 for 50. But, if I put Benjamin in, he'll only get 31. This is because, similar to Friendlies, the Dancer trait only actually gives 1.5 times the base's chance, as opposed to the 3 times the base you would get normally for countering an ability. So, while most of the normal stuff's out of the way, there are still a few more things I want to mention, namely having greater than 100% chance, or having a level difference, be it above a mission or below it. So firstly, once you hit a 100% chance, as I can do right here, it will actually give you extra experience based on how far over you are, as a percentage. In this example, on the Basilisk Stair, I have two followers, each giving their base of 12.5, two abilities being counted, each giving 37.5, and then Death Fascination right here, which gives a further 1.5 times the base for an extra 18.75. This means that overall, we actually have a 118.75 chance at completing this mission. So, 118.75 divided by 100 times the base experience of 1500 gives us 1781.25 experience, as you can see on the screen. Okay, so what happens when a follower is a higher level than the mission requires? This includes both a higher level, for example a level 100 doing a level 99 mission, and a higher eye level, for example a 630 doing a 615 mission. However, what I'm about to say does not apply to a normal level 100 mission, such as this one here that doesn't have an eye level. In a mission like this, a 655 will give the same chance as a 600. Anyway, for where it does apply, what will happen is you'll get an extra chance, which is once again a multiple of the base. When it comes to eye level, for every 5 eye level above a follower is, you'll get an extra 1 sixth of the base chance, but this does have a cap of half the base chance per follower. For example, the mission Peer Pressure. This has 3 followers and 3 abilities, meaning a base chance of 8.33%. So if I counter with someone who's an appropriate eye level like Morketh is, I'll actually get a 33 and a third percent chance. If I were to counter with someone say seven and a half eye levels higher, like Benjamin Gibb here is, the way it works is I would get an extra eight and a third divided by six, multiplied by that 7.5 he is above, divided by five, meaning an extra 2.1 or so chance, so up to 35. However, once you get a follower who's 630 eye level or above, the chance doesn't actually increase anymore. So if I were to compare this 637 here who counters one ability, 37%, or this 645, again, it's 37%. Difference in level works exactly the same way, where one level gives one sixth times the base as extra chance, again, capping at a three level difference or half the base per follower. Okay, so when a follower is too low, there are two scenarios. If their level appears orange, they'll give two-thirds the chance they would normally, but aside from that, they aren't actually penalized. However, if it's red, they're considered too low to make an impact and give zero chance towards the mission. There's actually one more thing I want to mention. If a mission has a starting chance greater than 0%, which it doesn't actually apply to any level 100 missions we've seen so far, you subtract that number from 100 in the initial equation. So instead of 100 divided by the number of followers plus the number of abilities times 3, you get 100 minus the existing chance over that same denominator. So, I understand that I've just been throwing numbers at you and it may have been pretty easy to get lost amongst that. So here's a summary. Followers get a base chance, which is calculated depending on how many abilities and followers there are available in a mission, using the equation 100 divided by the number of followers plus 3 times the number of abilities. If there's an existing chance above 0%, which doesn't actually apply to any level 100 missions, this equation becomes 100 minus the existing chance over the same denominator. 
When it comes to abilities, for each ability that's counted, you get three times that base added to the total. Traits also use this base chance where countering the environment or enemy type, having high stamina or burst of power, or Bluke's specific trait combat experience will get one times that base as extra chance. Having a trait that's based around a friendly being on the mission, such as Death Fascination or Child of Draenor, will give an extra chance equal to 1.5 times the base. Also, having the trait Dancer, which counters danger zones, will only give 1.5 times the base, since it is still a trait, as opposed to an ability that counters danger zones, which will give you 3 times the base. Being a higher level or eye level than a mission requires will give you an extra 1 sixth of the base per level or per 5 eye level, capping out at half the base per follower. This means that being more than 3 levels or 15 eye level above won't actually have any extra effect. Also, the eye level chance actually does scale linearly instead of just at every 5, so for example being 7.5 eye levels above will actually give you an extra chance of 1 sixth of the base times 1.5, instead of just waiting until 10 above and then ticking over to times 2. However, this doesn't apply to level 100 missions that don't have an eye level next to them. A follower with a 655 eye level will give the exact same chance as one with 600. If you're a lower level or eye level than a mission requires, there are two possibilities. If it's orange, two thirds of any chance from that character will still be applied, but if a follower is red, they apply no additional chance to the mission. Anyway guys, hopefully this has been a sufficient explanation of the way follower mission chance is calculated. If you have any questions or are unsure of anything, just ask in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer. Also, if there's any WoW content you'd like to see, let me know and I'll see if I can get around to it. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to favorite, like, and or subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Tommy J. Have a good one.